What's up, everybody? I just finished a recently released video game by the name of Final Fantasy 16, and having had the last couple months to play through it and do most of the stuff in the game and think about it, and having just now watched the ending, watched the credits roll, watched the epilogue, I want to go ahead and give my thoughts on it. So if you are watching me do this live in uh, stream on Twitch, then hello. And if you're watching this later on YouTube where I will be uploading it, then hello to you as well. All right. So Final Fantasy 16, to kind of understand where I'm coming from with this game, I think it's important that you understand my experience, my familiarity, my general takes on this franchise. This is a franchise that carries a lot of weight with me. This is a franchise that I have been playing consistently since 2002, 2003, back when I borrowed Final Fantasy Tactics from my friend. And basically, 21 years later, I'm still playing Final Fantasy games. And we're now at the point where I've played through about 20 different games in the franchise. Um, I'm currently working on another one, by the way. I'm actually playing through Final Fantasy II as we speak and throw in Dissidia while we're at it. So I have become something of a Final Fantasy ombudsman over the years. I've played a lot of them. I've beaten a lot of them. And to me, playing the new Final Fantasy game was just kind of like, like I had to do it. I had to see where this franchise is going. I had to see what's up. And understand that the series has produced some of my favorite games of all time with entries such as Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy Tactics, and Final Fantasy VI. And many games that I think are masterpieces, many games that I think are great, many games that I think are really good, and only a couple games that I think are notably substandard. So this game has a lot to live up to. So my overall thoughts on Final Fantasy 16 would be it is a very good game if you're willing to meet the game on its terms. And that's really important. That That's very important to understand here because this game is very much throwing out the typical tropes of a Final Fantasy game. It is not trying to be like those games that you may have grown up with. If you're me, the games that you played for most of your gaming life. So you have to understand they are trying to do their own thing here, and I wish they were doing something different. I do. I can admit that. I understand why they're doing it, I don't really agree with it because I think we have learned over the last decade, or not even decade, that you can make a traditional Japanese role-playing game and have it be a smash hit. Persona has proven this and Dragon Quest has proven this. Both of those games play like traditional Japanese RPGs and have done very well. So my suspicion is that Final Fantasy moved in the direction that it has because they felt like a game like that would have trouble succeeding. And maybe that's true in America, but I don't believe it's true overall. So there is definitely a part of me that laments the fact that this franchise has cho chosen to go in this direction. But at the end of the day, you can either accept that or you can't. And if you played Final Fantasy XV, which I did, you kind of know this is where things are headed anyway, because Final Fantasy XV was also adopting an action-based style of gameplay. So, knowing what you're getting into, as long as you're prepared to accept that the combat system for this game, Final Fantasy XVI, was designed by the guys who did the combat system for Devil May Cry V, and that they very much liberally borrow from what they did with the Devil May Cry V combat system, then I think you're going to have a really good time with this game overall, because the combat system that they utilized was good. The overall game that they implemented around that combat system is certainly good. And there are a lot of positive elements about this game, but you just have to be willing to meet the game on its terms. Mostly when I say that I speak of the gameplay, but I'm also talking about some of the other elements that put this game together, like, say, tone and feeling. 
Final Fantasy 16 tells a darker, more morose, more serious story that at times feels more like it's trying to be Game of Thrones than it is trying to be a more fun high fantasy. If I were to compare it to other Final Fantasy games, yes, those games could certainly be dark at points and they could certainly be serious at points, but in most of them there was at least some feeling of goofiness. There was some feeling of fantasy. There was some feeling of brevity and lightness. That's not really happening in this game. This game takes itself very seriously with the way it presents itself. The world of the game is presented as a very dark and desolate place that isn't friendly, that is not fun to live in, that is not fun to try to survive in. The events of the game are mostly tragic. The game takes itself very seriously and it presents very serious events. So if I'm comparing it to other games of the franchise, like I said, even on that level, and you think about the Honeycomb Inn in Final Fantasy VII, or the laughing scene in Final Fantasy X, or a lot of Final Fantasy IX, a lot of the goofiness that you see in those games, there's very little of that here. This game feels more like it could be Lord of the Rings plus Game of Thrones than anything else. And that's going to throw some people off, I think, but the game is rated M. The game is rated M, which is, I believe, a first for this franchise. And if you look at that when you purchase the game, you, you should get a pretty good idea of what to expect. There's going to be cursing, there's going to be blood, there's going to be things that set the mood for a more serious, depressing, and morose experience as far as a story goes, as far as a setting goes, as far as character development goes. But if you can accept that, I think what they did is quite good. I think the story they told is good. I think the world they created is good. I think that the environment, as far as a depressing and desolate world goes, is good. I think they did a good job of those things. The question is, are those things things that you want as a gamer who is used to a more balanced, maybe, experience in a Final Fantasy game? So, again, it's all about meeting the game on its terms. Now, if you're willing to meet on those terms, the game is very good in those areas. Um, I like the way the world is set. I like the presentation of the world. The game looks beautiful, and... As far as a story goes, I wasn't pulled into it like I get pulled into some games that I play. Like, old Final Fantasy games pull me in more. Persona games pull me in more. Those games have a way of grabbing you that this game can't match, admittedly. But what they did was good. The writing of the game is good. The story of the game is good. The presentation of that story is good. The mood of the game is consistent. And on those fronts, I do think this game succeeds at what it's clearly trying to do. It's not trying to be a light, easy, fun, uh, funny experience. It's trying to be serious. It's trying to be a game that feels more adult. It's trying to give something that I understand that there are going to be some people who play this game and they're going to go, this is not what I wanted. But without spoiling anything, I do believe that this game delivers on what it's attempting to deliver. And that goes for the gameplay as well. I already talked about how it's an action-based combat system. That's not really what I want in this franchise. But once you get past that, I do think the combat system is good. It's icon-based, which is basically very similar to a typical summon system, except instead of summons, you have icons that give you various different abilities with your sword via magic. And over the game, you unlock several icons i think there are like eight of them and each one has its own set of unique abilities you can mix and match them to suit your play style you can mix them up mid game to give you an advantage in a certain situation it provides little elements of rpg gameplay without actually becoming an rpg it's certainly more shallow than other games in the franchise for sure there's no doubt about that However, for the kind of game it's trying to be, it works perfectly fine, and you're probably going to spend the whole game trying to develop your ability tree and strengthen your abilities, so, yeah. 
So those are the main elements of the game. You have the presentation, the story, the world, and then you have the gameplay. And I think both those things are quite good and quite strong. I don't have too much bad to say about them. The gameplay can get a little bit repetitive, especially near the end, because you're just so used to cycling through icons and un unleashing abilities and then waiting for the abilities to recharge. Um, you, it's possible that by the end of the game, it'll start to get old. Because when you think about a Devil May Cry game, those games are short. Those games are 20 hours tops, often less. So when you're going through a game like this that is probably going to take, what, 50 out, 45 to 50 hours, yeah, it could get old by then. But I don't think that really kicks in until near the end of the game. So the areas in which this game are going to probably let some people down even within the context of trying to meet this game on its terms this another area where this game separates itself from the franchise and an area that i feel is a little more objective would be the way in which you traverse the world the game is very linear this is technically final fantasy 16 is an open world game technically the game is open world, but it's faux open world, if you will. It's fake open world. It's not really open world because you're not going around able to go wherever you want to at all times, checking out um, areas that you're not supposed to be in. You can't really go around talking to NPCs and have them say compelling things, like they'll say random stuff that doesn't matter at all. But it's not really open world in the way that like Grand Theft Auto is or even Final Fantasy XV. This is a linear experience that occasionally allows you to go back through certain areas to refight certain enemies or do hunts or side quests. But it doesn't feel like a open world game. Now, I think that there are a lot of people out there who are sick of open world. They don't really like the typical open world tropes. They're kind of sick of open world. So some people might be happy about that, that they're getting a linear experience that is trying to deliver a direct narrative. But at the end of the day, I can't shake the feeling the game is trying to trick you into thinking it's open world, but it's not actually open world. And because of that, there's not that much to do. There's no triple triad. There's no chocobo racing. There's no monster arena. There's no... The game doesn't have a minigame like that. Like like Blitzball, the greatest Final Fantasy um, minigame of all time. There's nothing like that in this game. There's nothing here that you're going to spend like 100 hours doing that is completely outside the parameters of the storyline of the game. And the reason why they did that seems to be because they wanted gamers who play the game to be focused on the plot. They didn't want gamers to get sidetracked from the plot for hours and hours and hours and end up having that plot lose meaning to them because they were away from it for so long. So they wanted to kind of force the gamer to continually move the main plot along. That's why when you get side quests, you only get a few at a time. So you spend like half an hour to an hour doing side quests and then you're moving the main plot along. So... It creates an experience that is very much meant to be linear, but when you're playing a game like this, I feel like you lose something when you don't give the player more to do. Because honestly, a decent chunk of what they give you to do, the little bit that they do, is not good. That's the one real problem I have with this game. But unfortunately, it's a big problem. The side quests are terrible. The side quests... I mean, most games don't have good side quests, but the side quests in Final Fantasy XVI are the definition of... Go talk to this person, then go talk to that person, then go get three of this item, bring this item to that person, go back to the first person, talk to them, all right, you get your XP. Sometimes the side quests lead to battles, and that's fine. The combat's good. But a lot of the side quests are literally just go talk to people for 20 minutes until you get XP. It is a real issue when that is the only thing that is the only thing you can really do outside of the main quest and it's just not good so that's the main thing holding this game back from greatness i don't think this game is great and that is the main reason why
Now, I will say this. I do like the hunts. The hunts are cool. So, there aren't a ton of them. They're mostly pretty easy as long as you take them on at a reasonable time. In fact, I think this whole game is fairly easy at the uh, difficulty that I played it at. So, I, I think this is probably one of the easier games in the franchise, but that's how easy or hard you want the game to be is completely up to you as the player. You can make the difficulty harder, you can restrict yourself from using certain abilities, so to me that's not even really a fair criticism. But the hunts I kind of like because you actually have to work for them a little bit. You actually have to reason out where they might be, and then you have to actually go beat them. So the hunts are pretty good. Um, again, there aren't a ton of them. The, the game's really trying hard to not distract you from the main plot, so I understand that. But I wish there was a little bit more of that. And there, uh, there is a crafting system, but it's very shallow and simple. So even with that crafting system, I don't feel like you're adding that much to the game outside of the main plot stuff. So that's the main criticism. The other criticism I do want to mention here, this is kind of a small thing, but the game uses a decent number of quick time events in storyline boss fights. And I feel like QTEs are just old hat. I think QTEs are not really part of a good part of gameplay in 2023 um i do like the um the uh, summon f the icon fights for what they are they're not great but i do think they did a good job of mixing up the game and they do a really good job of increasing the scope and the magnitude of fights so it feels like i'm doing something awesome in a god of war kind of way when you get to those fights and you do them, but there are a lot of QTEs in those sequences, and I just don't think QTEs are really cutting it anymore. But they only really happen in the storyline boss fights, so it's really not that big of a deal. And I think that's most of what can be said about this game. It's I think it's very good. Presentation is top-notch. The game looks beautiful. The game plays very well, as long as you're willing to accept that kind of gameplay. Uh, the combat's fluid. I really like the icon system. I like the way in which they tried to meet old school Final Fantasy players at least a little bit, but it's so thin that there's definitely a part of me that wonders, is this what Final Fantasy fans want? In a lot of cases, I think the answer is going to be no, this is not what they want. And I understand it. I'm kind of with them. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's fair to criticize a game because it's not what you wanted it to be. You need to criticize the game for what it is and how good it is at doing that thing. And I do think it does it fairly well. Um, the characters are okay, I would say. I think that's kind of a thing I'm very in the middle on, pretty indifferent on. Uh, the characters are okay. I don't feel strongly about them, but I didn't dislike them. I didn't find them to be super forgettable, but I didn't find them to be very memorable. It's kind of just part of having a more serious game when you really think about it. When you have a serious game like this, the characters aren't going to be quite as colorful, so they're not going to be as memorable. So that just kind of comes part and parcel of trying to do a more Game of Thrones feeling um, uh, game over something a little more high fantasy and goofy like older Final Fantasy games. But if I was to put this game in a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it like an 8.8. .8. It's very good. I think it falls a little short of greatness if they could give you a little more to do. And I understand that they didn't they intentionally didn't want to give gamers that much to do outside of the uh, main quest. I understand that. I think that might just be something you need to do, especially in modern day when games have so many different things that you can do at all times. You got games like Red Dead where you can spend hours just playing poker or doing hunting. You got games like Grand Theft Auto, you got games like The Witcher. It's just, you, you you don't have to be pure open world. Like, if you're not going to do an open world game, I get it. But if you're going to do an RPG, then I think you need to let the world breathe a little bit more than they did. But the game that they made is very good. I liked it a lot. It was a lot of fun. And at the end of the day, I can live with that. And this is the direction the franchise is going now at the end of the day. I don't see any way they come back. And that's disappointing to me. But... At least I can say they are churning out good games. This is a big improvement over Final Fantasy XV, in my opinion. And if they keep making games like this, I will continue to play them. Alright, see you guys later.